Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Let me try it again. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. It's truly a great day and a great thing to be announced with Lord this morning. I am so glad to see each and every one of you. I apologize for the late start, but God is still going to work and we'll still, by, by His grace, learn what He intended for us to learn, even this morning. All right, but before we actually dive into the meat of the lesson, let us pray and get right on to it. So let us pray. Join with With sorrows and cares, hearts in the burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near, oh, burdens are lifted at Calvary, Calvary, Calvary. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your blessed Holy Sabbath that you have given us. We thank you, O oh God, for the privilege of prayer whereby we can come to you and pray and talk to you where we truly can find help and strength in the time of prayer. Father in heaven, I pray that you would forgive us for all our sins, cleanse us from all our unrighteousness as a people, as a congregation, and as individuals. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would clean us up. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Father, that we may speak your words, but not only speak it, but Father, that we may live your words. We thank you for what you have done for us. I pray that you'd use me in a way that you've never done before. I pray that you'd surprise me and surprise your audience by the words that you would speak to us. It will be words of life, words of hope, words of reproof, words that would mend and cause us by your grace to love We thank you for what you have done for us. We pray that you will be with us even now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Alright, Brother Isaac and Brother Calvin, we can start giving the papers. So two gentlemen will, will be coming around giving out the back notes for today. And could you believe it? are on lecture number 10 lecture number 10 and lecture number 10 is entitled the endocrine and reproductive systems endocrine and reproductive systems and today will mark the end not of the series but the end of us dealing with the systems because so far we've dealt with okay two from 11 that is yeah, we've dealt with nine systems already. Nine systems we've dealt with. It's only 11 that we're going to be dealing with in total. So today is the last two. The last two. Endocrine and reproductive systems. And here we have, here I have a picture of the lymphatic system. Reason being is because if we look at your lecture notes, we're going to do a little bit of review on the lymphatic system because I didn't finish last week on dealing with why well, didn't I didn't get into the spiritual connections or spiritual applications associated with the lymphatic system so we're going to deal with that today that's why this image is up so we have the lymphatic system here we have a, a picture which is representative of what happens in the reproductive system all right and we get to get into what all is happening here and here we have an image of anyone know glad which, which gland this is the thyroid gland and the thyroid gland is the shape of a what? It has the shape of a butterfly. So here's the thyroid gland and that's indicative or representative of the endocrine system. So we're going to be dealing with the endocrine, endocrine and reproductive systems. Again, we are in this series, Principles of Anatomy and Physiology with Biblical Connections by God's grace of studying the human body seeking to understand how we are made how we are put together how these body parts work how the heart 
pumps the blood and you know what happens inside so that we could by God's grace better be able to take care of the body and so that we could also get those biblical connections as well now the first question the first question that we will consider that we'll be considering today is and we considered it last time is what are the components or what do we mean when we say components and last time we saw that do I, no, I don't have it out. but last time we saw that a component is an element or a feature or a property or I should say an item that makes up a whole right it makes up a whole and last week Sabbath on really Saturday afternoon Saturday evening Saturday night really uh, someone came to me and, and gave me or shared with me something that I thought was very wonderful but I didn't I didn't mention it um, that I didn't mention inside the, the, the presentation and it was this when we talk about components or elements a component like we said is something that makes up a whole right so components of a car tire you know wheel glass stuff right components of a food rice um, beans salad they make up the food and what was shared with me is, is this that the com that Jesus that God has all the components that we need for our salvation so everything that we need for salvation everything that we need for the upward journey towards Canaan God has already supplied and we're going to talk about that a bit more as we go into this series or as we go into this presentation so what are the components of the lymphatic system like we saw last time the components of the lymphatic system would be the do I have it out? I should have it out okay it's nervous yes the components of the lymphatic system would be the lymphatic fluid right lymphatic fluids not only lymphatic fluids but not only the lymphatic fluid but also lymphatic vessels right also the spleen the thymus lymph nodes tonsils cells and cells that carry out immune responses such as b cells t cells and other cells so for a picture here we have the tonsils we also have the thymus right here and we have the spleen the lymph nodes the appendix the bone marrow these are the different components of the lymphatic system and we look at the function of the lymphatic system and the function of the lymphatic system one of it is protection right it makes or produces the cells that we need for immunity the cells that we need for the immune responses and stuff like that the lymphatic system not only responsible for protection but also responsible for cleansing and we come back to that fact responsible for what cleansing it returns proteins and fluid to the blood, carries lipids, some people call them fats, from the gastrointestinal tract to the blood. So the lymphatic system takes the fats from the digestive system and pours it into the blood. From the, digestive, from the gastrointestinal tract to the blood contains sites of maturation and pro proliferation of B cells and T cells. So what happens is when we look at the lymphatic system, we have in the lymphatic system sites or locations where these cells, B cells, T cells, immune cells, where these cells maturate or mature. And not only mature, but also where these cells are going to proliferate, right? Distribute. And these cells protect against disease-causing microbes. That's an lymphatic system review. Now, if we consider, and you, have the, you, you need your hand over this because I don't have any slides. If we consider the endocrine system and we ask the question, what are the components, what are the elements, what are the parts of the endocrine system? It's right there in your hand notes. But if we look, then this picture is not there because there was something happened with the, with the, with the printing. But this picture is supposed to be on, you see where there's a blank? This picture is supposed to be there. And these are the components of the, lympho the endocrine system. Now, in short, the endocrine system contains hormones. And these hormones are there for controlling or regulating what body activities. So, the, the endocrine system 
produces these hormones, make these hormones, and also responsible for secreting these hormones that are responsible for a variety of things. You know, even when we look at, for example, one of them, which is what? Indo adrenal gland, right? And this is the kidneys, right? But the adrenal gland is right on top, right? And you ever heard some people say, well, adrenaline, right? That's the hormone, adrenaline, right? It's there to give you that rush when, you know, some, someone is chasing you, dog is chasing you, something's happening, you get that, what they call adrenaline rush, right? That's secreted from our what? Adrenal gland, right? Which is on top of the kidneys, right? But that's a part of the, the endocrine system, which, which what? Secretes hormones that we need for body activities. That's not the only hormone that's secreted by the the endocrine um, system that's not the only hormone that is there that's different our work this morning is not to look at every component or every hormone because we're just giving a brief overview but hopefully by the end of this um, um, discussion you could get appreciation that our endocrine system is there to secrete hormones that control body activities that's all we need to know for now in this series because we're gonna get deep in it very deep um, when we look at the endocrine system in its totality and that would be chapter 18 if and when we get there all right so endocrine system we have the adrenal gland this is the kidneys and on top of the kidneys is the adrenal gland and we have the pituitary gland the penile gland the testicles the ovary the pancreas the thyroid the thymus all these are a part of the endocrine system and of course you could read there in the handle actual functions of it it says functions you could read with me on corner three functions of the endocrine system one two three regulate body activities by releasing hormones which are chemical messages transported in the blood from the endocrine gland or tissue or target organs and that's the function of the endocrine system now going to move to the reproductive system the reproductive system it was deliberate it was deliberate that I le left it for last because it gave me a challenge and I even asked you know a few people like you know how can I present this because in the reproductive system you could go really deep or really shallow right and you have you have so many different minds here you know you have, this, you have you know children and adults and you know how deep do you go which pictures do you put up, right? It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's delicate, right? It's, it's a delicate topic, right? So, it was left intentionally for last. But it's an important system, would you agree? Right? It's very vital, right? It's interwoven into our human experience. In fact, it's the reason that we're here. The reproductive system, right? And in short, in short, what is the reproductive system responsible for? Reproduction, right? So, here we have, I don't have to tell you what is going on here, but here we have what we call sperm cells. And these sperm cells is going to the ovum, right? This is ovum cell. And you notice that one um, sperm cell actually penetrates to this ovum cell. The sperm cell comes from the male. In fact, the the responsibility of the male reproductive system is to produce these sperm cells. And the responsibility of the female reproductive system is to receive these sperm cells. But only one gets through. And as we can see, this is the one that gets through. And that would be the one that would be involved in fertilization and eventually birth. So. In short, the, the, the work or the function of the reproductive system is to produce life. And we're going to get into that. You know what, cheapest we do it now. Reproduce. To reproduce means to produce a copy of. And that's important because, because God is so amazing. When humans reproduce, when not only humans, but when organisms reproduce they produce after their own time so reproduction sorry reproduce 
means to produce a copy of. I mean, you can imagine you are, you're pregnant or whatever the case may be, and you produce a tiger. I mean, how awkward that, that, that would that be? You're a human, but yet you produce a tiger, you produce a, a lion. That would be so weird, and, and, and it, would, it, would, it would make you feel like, how could I relate? You know, how could this happen, right? In fact, let's turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, and let's look at the principles of reproduction. In the physical sense, what are the principles of reproduction, right? Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, one of the major principles of reproduction is that when reproduction occurs, it occurs after one's own kind. That's, that's, that's one of the principles of reproduction. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. And the Bible says, read with me on the count of three, one, two, three. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after, after, after his what? Kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was what? So, so one of the major principles of reproduction in a physical sense is that when we reproduce, we produce after our own kind. I mean, think about it. What does reproduce mean? You have two words, if you must. Re and what? Produce. What produce means? Produce means to make something. So when man or organisms reproduce, they, they, they produce again. No, you missed that. What, mean, what, what does it mean to recreate? Okay, recreate means, okay, you already created something and then now... I don't know, just demolish or whatever it is. So you're going to create it again. If you want to renovate, that's probably not a good example. What's a good example? If you're going to, if you're going to restore, right? You're, you've already, you're, you're already stored. You're, you're already, it's already built, but then you're going to store again. So when we talk about reproduction, it's producing again. But Isaac, what do you mean producing again? See, you are already here. So when you're producing again, what happens is that you're making one after your own kind. And that's one of the major principles of reproduction. It's not that we're producing life and it's like awkward to us, but we're producing that which is, that, that's what, we, that's what we, could, we could relate to. Genesis chapter 1 verse 24, let's turn there with me. Again, the principle of a major principle of repro reproduction is seen here, Genesis chapter 1, verse 24, and God said, let the earth bring forth what? Living creature after what? His kind and, cre and creeping thing and beast of the earth after, let, let me read again, and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind and it was so. So what are, the, what, are the, what are the components of the reproductive system? Some I will name, some I will not name. You could see it in the, in the notes. Gonads, that's the testicles in male, ovaries in females, and associate organs such as the uterine tubes, fallopian tubes, uterus, and we have other different things. And we have, yes, other different things. So the functions would be Gonads produce gametes or sperm to unite to form a new organism. Also release hormones that regulate in the reproduction and other body processes. And that's the reproductive system, responsible for reproduction, responsible for bearing offspring. And I say that loosely because God truly is responsible for creating life. What we have is organ, organs that facilitate this process, but truly, God is responsible for giving life. For our life cannot be generated in a lab, right? But life is given by God. So the whole reproductive system, we have organs that facilitate reproduction, but God is responsible for giving, the giving of life. Okay, now let's look at biblical connections. And this is going to be amazing. Biblical connections. Now, when we, look at, when we look at the act or process of birth, when we look at the act or process of birth, the reproductive system 
is actively engaged. You, you, you agree with me, right? I mean, look at birth. The reproductive system and its organs are actively engaged. Because it, it's because of, we have you know, the reproductive system, we have these, the, the sperm cells reaching, connecting with the ovum, and they connect fertilization, and we have you know, pregnancy, and then we have a birth. Right? All these things, the reproductive system, I and mean, of course all the, all the body is engaged in it, but the re reproductive system is actively engaged in birth. Right? Now, now, in the Bible, what is compared to birth? In the Bible, what is compared to birth? Say it again. Say it again. Conversion, right? You're looking at my notes. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And we begin at verse 1. And this is, this is us getting some insight into a, a, a discussion that Jesus had with a Pharisee, Nicodemus. John chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. I notice what it says. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Nicodemus here is flattering Jesus. But Jesus doesn't buy into this. Jesus sends a message to directly cut and penetrate the soul and the heart of Nicodemus. And Jesus effectively said, I don't want your praise, right? I want you to get this message. And the message is this. And Jesus said unto him, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot, what? See the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? The mother's womb, right? That's, a, that's one of the organs that's associated with what? The reproductive system, right? So, can he go back into his mother's womb a second time and be born? Verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and a spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6, that which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not, I say unto thee, ye must be born again. What is Jesus talking about? Jesus is talking about conversion. He's not talking about literally going back into the mother's womb again, but he's talking about conversion. He's talking about that experience when you've met Jesus and you've accepted Jesus into your heart and he works a transformation into your heart. That's what Jesus is talking about here as what? Birth. As being what? Born again. But remember the major principle that we said about reproduction. What is one of the major principles of reproduction? That the major principle of major reproduction we said is that we produce after our what? Own kind. Watch verse 6. Watch verse 6. So in the physical, in the physical sense, one of the major principles of reproduction is that we produce after our own kind. Watch verse 6 speaking about spiritual reproduction. Notice what it says. That which is born of flesh is what? Flesh. So when that baby comes out of the mother's womb, we're expecting one like what? One like ourselves. That which is born of flesh is what? Flesh. So when, we know we have in, sorry, we know we soon have um, babies coming, and we're expecting that the one that comes out would be like those that are what? Present, right? After his own kind. So that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is what? Spirit. I hope you all didn't miss that. So what do you think when physical reproduction takes place, you reproduce after your own kind? And God is saying when spiritual reproduction, when spiritual birth takes place, the person, the babe that is reproduced is after his own kind. But who is the parent in this spiritual reproduction? Who is the parent? Who is the reproducer, if you must? Someone says God. Someone says God. Let's turn 
Let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. And we're going to look at verse 23. Who is the parent? Because we know that when, spirit, when, when physical reproduction takes place, he, the person produces after their own kind. So if we know who is the reproducer, then we can know how or what, what would be the nature of the, the offspring. We have a question, Brother Bodhi? All right, can someone bring the mic to Brother Bodhi? He has a question or comment. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Can someone bring the mic again to Brother Bodhi? Okay, First Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 23. Notice this. Being what? Born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Now, now keep your fingers right on those, those verses, right? And turn with me to 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. Keep your hand right there at Peter. Turn with me at 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. In our search of who is the parent. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 1 John, sorry, chapter 3, verse 9. And notice what it says. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. What it says? Whosoever is what? Born of God doeth not commit sin. Oh. He is born of God. So who is the reproducer? God. So what should be the nature or what should be the characteristic, characteristic of the offspring? It should be like what? God. Right about it. Um. I'm glad you exp you explaining that because I was going to ask the question concerning this reproduction you're talking about. Yes. Now we know that Adam came from the from the from the from the dust from the ground. Yes. And we know God is God. Yes. Yet, but He says in ways in chapter Genesis chapter one and ways twenty six to twenty seven. You're going to read that. You're going to read that. Read, I want you to read it and just elaborate on that for me. Wow, it's like. That's the exact verse that I have written down. Honestly, the exact verse. <laughs> so, who's coming? You want to read it, or you just want us, or you want us to? Con okay, all right. Production. I mean, you're talking about after its kind and yes. reproduction. Yes. And so I'm looking at verse 26 and 27. Yes. Yes. But yet I'm looking at man coming from the dust, mm. but not God. But yet. He's saying he's going to make this man in his image after his likeness. likeness. So I want you to elaborate on that if you can. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, no problem. So, and it's right out. It's right out in the notes that I have here by God's grace. And we are going to come to that particular issue. But hopefully the point is, is clear. The major principle of reproduction is that when a reproducer produces, they produce after their own kind. No wonder the verse says, Whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. Why? Because his reproducer is without sin. Therefore, when he is produced, he should not have elements that is not according to what? His reproducer. He should have the character, he should have the nature of the what? Of the reproducer after his own kind. So, if we look at the character of God, we should be able to see by God's grace the character of God in his children. Because, after all, he was the one that produces us. If we continue, if we, okay, back to, back to Peter. Now, I told you to keep your hand on Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. It says, being born of God, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. In the, in the natural world, we have a seed, don't we? In the natural world, we have, we're looking at the seed right here. These are the what? Well, only one gets in, right? But this is the seed in the natural but in the spiritual, what is the seed? The Word of God. So the Word of God is the seed that causes new life. You missed that. 
The word of God is the seed that causes what? New life. And that's why we are encouraged to spend time in the word of God, to spend time studying the word of God, so that the word of God may quicken us into action. So, but it's a sobering that if we are going to call ourselves children of the heavenly king, we must have the characteristics of our heavenly king. And what are his characteristics? The major, the major, the major characteristic of God is what? The major one, the major one, the one that supersedes all. First John, chapter 4, verse 8. First John, chapter 4, verse 8. And notice what the Bible says in First John, chapter 4, verse 8. And it says, He that loveth not, I, I still have some pages turning again, First John, chapter 4, verse 8. And what does it say? Read it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Why? Why would it say that? Because it makes sense. Because the children should have the characteristics of the parent. That's why God says, if you don't demonstrate my characteristics, you can't say that you are my children. You can't say. In fact, if we look at the first offspring of God, if we look at the first offspring of God, when I mean, we're looking at in terms of humanity, notice how the Bible describes this first offspring. Genesis chapter 1, beginning at, one, beginning at verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. Notice how the Bible describes this first offspring. Genesis chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. And it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. What happens when you have a child? Right? And persons come, and they say, Boy, that I look like so-and-so. That ain't so-and-so, baby. How did they deduce that? They say, no, 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 no. That ain't my brother child. Or that ain't my sister child. Wait, but they can't say that ain't my sister child. They can't say that. They can't say that. But they, they can say, that ain't my brother child or my because the the features. And 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 it hurts when you know, sometimes it happens. It hurts when, you know, the child don't come looking like you. You know, you feel you feel oh, wow, like what happened here, right? But through the features of the child, you get to say, oh yes, that's me. That's me. That's verification. And God says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. God is saying, I want, I'm going to make someone, something and in the, in the spirit or in, the, in, in keeping with the principle of reproduction, I'm going to make him after me. In keeping, in harmony with that principle, I'm going to make him after me. So, God says, and, let, and God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let him, let, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. God gave man dominion. What does God have? Dominion. God gave man rulership. God gave man authority to rule over this. Because God is saying, I'm going to make him after me. He's going to look like me. He's going to have my likeness. Verse 27, so God, as he said, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And the question is raised, how could this being who is coming from dust how could this, this being who is coming from, from that which is physical, that which is from dust, have the image or the likeness of his maker? How could this dust-made individual right, have the likeness and the image 
of his creator. You have, you have, I guess you have an answer. Someone? Um, can someone bring a, a mic to the front? How could this, how could man have the image, the likeness of his maker, made, being made from dust? Yes, good morning. Happy Sabbath. Good morning. I was thinking about it from Brother Bodhi asked the question, and what we, what we are as human tend to do is we look more at the physical, which is flesh, yeah. made from dust and formed form from dust. But the key to this is God's character. Yeah. 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 His character. Yeah. That is what God put in the yeah. form clay. Yeah. His character. And then we see even it displayed with Moses saying, show me, Thank you, Lord. you know, and he showed him his character. So it's always character. And again, it ties, in, it ties in with once we are reproduced now after his kind again, yes. his character yes. should be seen in us, yes. which is love, joy, peace, yes. so on Long and so right. forth. Amen. Amen. So that is it. Not so much the physical. Although Adam was beautiful, yes. Yes. <laughs> but then it is God's character. Amen. Amen. And I, I agree. The, the, when God said we're going to create man after our image, he was talking about character. But I would hasten to say, I would hasten to say, I would hasten to say, that was just, it was not only character. I said, I said, what do you mean? Adam, when he was created by God, Elements of his physical features, we can parallel that to that of God's. Now, someone may say, okay, Isaac, speaking blasphemy now. Let me, let me correct my statements. Let me make sure I in line, right? Adam, when he was made, when he was created, was not made paralyzed or weak or deformed in any way. We don't have a God that is impotent in any way. God says, it's not that my hand is too short. You missed that. God says, it's not that my hand is, it's not that my hand is short. It's not that I am weak. It's not that I am incapable, but your sins. So, in creating man, this beautiful, this dignified human being, God was showing creation, was showing us how he wants us to be. I imagine Adam not being, I don't think, I don't think God, I, I shouldn't say I don't think, I know God didn't create Adam with a diseased lungs, Right? With, de with, with deformed uh, shape. Why? Because Adam was to bear his image. And it's not, uh, although character was, is, is, is the prominent thing, it's not merely in, because even when we dress, right, we're supposed to show the world the character of God, if you understand what I mean, in our physical, right? So, I think that the likeness or the image of God was not merely seen in Adam's character, but also in his bearing, also in his form, also in his physical. Now I'm not saying that God has everything in particular in terms of physical than that of man, but I'm saying elements of Adam's physical character, we could parallel that to that of the character of God. So a physical stature form, we could parallel that to that of the the character of God, yes. Um, we define we define image image and likeness. Yes. But one of the commandments deal, deals with uh, worshiping and, and the scripture talks about don't don't look at God as, as a bird or as a tree or mm -hmm. all these other things. Mm -hmm. And I I would include that to this extent mm -hmm. as a human. Because people can worship, uh, you, can, you can create a human form, yeah. and you can worship yes. that form, yeah, assuming right. that that's what God is. Without, you understand what I'm saying? I understand saying? where you're from. So, 
even though it used the word, and we explain, and brother, brother, uh, talk about the does it talk about the, 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 the character, and I feel that that's where I will really look at mm -hmm. is the character. Even though it used the word image and likeness, mm -hmm. but but in our in our uh, sinful mind, we might assume that this is how we look. You understand what I'm saying? And so, but I would, I would stick to the character. Even though it talks about, we talk about the after my likeness and that yes, kind yes. of so forth. But it's also, the scripture also talks about making imagery to Christ, assuming of the God that this is how we look. Uh -huh. So we even have to be careful. Understood. All right. So that is. See, but then the thing about it is that, thank you so much for the comment. The thing about it is that that's why when persons not of our faith interact with us or come into this building or come into any other Seventh day Adventist church and they, they, they have an idea of what God should be, but they don't see it in his children. So they are, they are puzzled and they are perplexed because they are like, you're God's child. And God look like this, but you look like this. And it's puzzling. And it could turn some people off, right? And that's why by His grace, we need to represent His character fully so that persons looking on can see a direct parallel to God Himself. But that's, and that's the reason why God used parables, you know. And that's why he used the imagery of birth. Because that's what we're accustomed to. And that's where we, that's, he used it to facilitate our understanding so that we could understand what salvation is about. So we can understand what conversion is about. So when, when God says, Nicodemus, conversion is just like birth, we could understand it because, oh, I understand what birth is. So God uses these imagery so that we could understand and better appreciate um, salvation. All right, that's the reproductive system and its spiritual applications. I'm going to close with the endocrine system and its application, its spiritual connections. The endocrine system is responsible, like we said, for producing and secreting hormones. And one of the, and those hormones regulate the body's activities. One of the body's activities is growth. Amen? One of the body's activities is growth. What does the Bible have to say concerning growth? 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 18. So the endocrine system is responsible for the growth process. Does the Bible have anything to say about Christian growth? 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. What does it say? 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Oh. Oh, I in 1 John. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. And notice what it says. On the corner of 3, 1, 2, 3. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. In, in, first, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 we find the command or the appeal to grow. That's what we just saw. God here is beckoning us, don't remain in a one state, but grow. So in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, we find the appeal, the command to grow. Notice what we find in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, we find the appeal to grow. In 2 Peter chapter 1, Chapter 1, verse 3. Notice what we find. 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3. Verse 3, it says, According, let's start from verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us what? All things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to the glory, to glory and virtue. 
So in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, we find the appeal or the command to grow. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, we find that strength is available. For it says here, according to his divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertaineth to life and to godliness. So God is saying, I am telling you to grow, but I want to make, I want to make sure that you understand that I have given you all that you need to grow. Liberally is supplied the strength that we need to grow, that we may be without excuse.